Stealth fighters like America's F-35 and F-22 are often touted as being invisible on radar, but you probably already know that they're not. But what does it mean when you hear Russia or China claim to have a new early warning radar system that can detect and track America's stealth fighters? I'm gonna let you guys in on a secret. It's true, they can, and we can too. Detecting stealth fighters isn't actually all that difficult, and I'll explain why. I'm Alex Hollings, and this is Air Power. Stealth fighters, or the fifth generation of fighters, are a fairly small fraternity. We're talking about the F-22 Raptor, the F-35 Joint Strike Fighter, the Chengdu J-20 Mighty Dragon, and the Su-57 Felon. And of course, not all stealth fighters are created equal, and these aircraft all produce very different radar returns. But one thing they have in common is a stealth design meant to minimize the aircraft's radar signature, delaying or sometimes even preventing detection. Protection. But because of the physical requirements for tactical jets, stealth fighters can be easily spotted by certain low-frequency radar bands. And among the various militaries around the world, that isn't a surprise. In fact, it's not even uncommon for air traffic control radar to be able to spot stealth fighters on their scopes. And we're not just talking about when these aircraft are carrying external munitions or fuel tanks. Even in full-on stealth mode, F-22s and F-35s just aren't as sneaky as you might think. But they are incredibly tough to shoot down. Now, radar in general, and certainly the way it interacts with stealth aircraft, is a pretty complicated subject, so I'm going to try to break it down in a way that's as approachable as possible. And I figured I'd start with a basic summary of why stealth fighters are easy to track on radar, and then we'll delve a little bit deeper into the details. Modern stealth fighters are designed from the ground up to delay or prevent detection from radar arrays that are capable of attaining what we call a weapons grade lock. In other words, radar arrays that can guide a missile to a target flying in the sky. Lower frequency radar arrays just aren't capable of guiding weapons with that sort of accuracy, but are capable of spotting stealth fighters. As a result, most nations operate early warning radar systems that can identify stealth fighters in their airspace. They just lack the means to effectively target them. Using these radars in conjunction with other systems and targeting methodologies can feasibly allow for engaging stealth fighters, and that's why mission planning is essential for all stealth operations. In other words, stealth fighters are very difficult to target, but not difficult at all to detect or even to track. But you'll still see headlines pop up from time to time saying inflammatory things like China announces that they tracked F-22s over the Pacific, or Russia was tracking F-35s over Europe. And then you'll often see these stories cited in the comments section below videos like mine or in subreddits about aviation where people are are trying to dismiss the capabilities of certain stealth fighters. They'll say, such and such a stealth fighter isn't actually any good because such and such a nation has a radar that can track it. And trust me, I can understand why that seems bad. After all, we're all sort of brought up on this idea that stealth is, in large part, all about delaying or preventing radar detection. And that is true. But you need to understand that stealth is complicated. And to be honest, so is radar. And there are different types of radar arrays that leverage different radar frequency bands, for different reasons. But let's start with stealth, because it's often discussed in a singular sense, like it's one technology that can be incorporated into an aircraft's design. But stealth, or low observability, is really a combination of overlapping technologies, design traits, materials, production methodologies, and even combat tactics that are all intended to overlap to delay or prevent detection from a number of different means, including radar. Developing a stealth platform is a constant battle between cost, capability, and the limitations of the technology of your day. 
which means no stealth platform is actually invisible. But in a general sense, stealth is a term used to describe efforts made to reduce an aircraft's various signatures, including radar, infrared or heat, acoustic, and even visual. I'm going to quote Dr. Rebecca Grant, who's the president of IRIS, an independent research organization, and also the director of the General William Mitchell Institute for Air Power Studies, which is a nonprofit research arm of the Air Force Association. Back in 2010, Dr. Grant wrote The Radar Game, Understanding Stealth and Aircraft Survivability for the Mitchell Institute. And she said, The ideal for stealth aircraft is to reduce the signature in all aspects. All aspect reduction is valuable because enemy fighters and ground-based air defenses might observe the attacking aircraft from multiple angles as the aircraft flies its mission. However, in practice, signature reductions are not uniform. Aerodynamic trade-offs also force compromises in signature reduction. Now that is a very articulate way of saying stealth fighters are basically flying piles of compromises. You have to make hard decisions about which signatures you want to prioritize reducing and which ones you can sort of let slide in order to accomplish your overarching goals for fighter performance. Air defense radar systems work by broadcasting electromagnetic waves and pulses, and then measuring the return of those waves when reflected back by an aircraft or weapon. And as you're almost certainly already aware, stealth fighters are designed to deflect those radar waves away, rather than directly back at the receiver. And they're also covered in radar absorbent materials meant to absorb as much of that electromagnetic energy as possible. Because electromagnetic waves can be broadcast at different different wavelengths and frequencies, they interact with the bodies they encounter in different ways. And that forces designers to make compromises regarding the types of radar they want their fighters to avoid being detected by. The design elements that can help delay or prevent detection from one type of radar won't necessarily help with another. So stealth fighters are designed specifically to limit detection from the types of radar arrays that can effectively guide a weapon to its position. While stealth aircraft are still not invisible to these radar arrays, the goal is to make their radar returns small enough to delay that detection, which would allow these stealth fighters to either engage first or escape without being targeted. Radars broadcast these electromagnetic waves in the L, S, C, X, or multiple K bands, and each band leverages different wavelengths and frequencies, with only the higher frequency, smaller wavelength systems providing the image fidelity needed to accurately target an aircraft. Lower frequency radar arrays in the L and the S band, for instance, are usually capable of spotting stealth fighters in the air, but because of their larger wavelengths, they can't produce accurate enough data to actually lock onto the aircraft with a missile. At times, we're talking about a half mile or more in variance. You just know there's a stealth fighter somewhere in that bubble. Stealth fighters don't really operate in places that no one knows they're there. They're really loud, and during the day you can often see them. The F-35, for instance, produces very visible contrails. But the truth is, they're not all that worried about being detected, they're worried about being targeted. And that's why stealth fighter designs limit detection specifically against those higher frequency radar arrays, including parts of the S-band, the C, the X, and the K-bands. Now because of this, these fighters are still visible on lower frequency radar bands like S and C, and as a result, many nations have developed early warning radar systems that can notify defensive forces that stealth fighters are in the area, and allow them to orient other defensive systems in the right direction to try to engage them. Back in 1999, a U.S. Air Force F-117 Nighthawk, piloted by Colonel Dale Zelko, was shot down over Yugoslavia by a very dated Soviet-era SA-3 surface-to-air missile battery. Now, how exactly that happened is sort of a combination of American complacency and the very effective strategy of the Yugoslavian commander, a man named Zoltan Dani. Now, the F-117 Zelko was piloting was flying along the same flight path that multiple F-117s had flown before, which is not a good idea, and because of bad weather, it wasn't flying with any electronic warfare escorts. Another bad idea. But nonetheless, Donnie's troops would not have been able to shoot down that Nighthawk if he didn't have the wherewithal to violate procedure. You see, they knew the Nighthawk was coming, 
thanks to low-frequency early warning radar arrays that had already detected the Nighthawk as it approached. They knew the flight path from watching previous Nighthawks fly it, but when they powered on their radar, even when they could see the Nighthawk in the sky, the radar saw nothing. Now, this wasn't Donnie's first rodeo. He was well aware of the threat that anti-radiation missiles, or radar hunting missiles, posed to missile batteries like his. Fifteen years earlier, in the Israeli-Lebanon War of 1982, he watched Israel destroy 29 out of 30 surface-to-air missile sites in less than two hours. So he was well aware of the standing policy, that you power on your radar very briefly only two times before breaking it down, loading it onto trucks and moving it to a new location to be set up again. So well aware that the Nighthawk was overhead, Donnie powered his radar on for the second time and once again found nothing on the scope. Now at this point, procedure dictates that he should have had his team power it down, break it down, and relocate. Which, from what I understand, they were able to do in less than 90 minutes at that point, which is pretty impressive. But instead, Donnie took a minute. He recognized that the weather was bad, that there were no electronic warfare aircraft in the sky, and realized there were probably no wild weasels with radar hunting missiles either. So he broke the rules and decided to power on his radar one more time. Now, by all accounts, Colonel Zelko was a very experienced combat pilot, and he certainly can't be blamed for what happened next. In what could be considered either incredibly good or bad luck, depending on which side of the conflict you were on, Zelko opened the Bombay doors of his Nighthawk to deploy his munitions exactly as Donnie powered on his radar for the third time. With the Bombay doors open, the F-117 stealth profile was compromised just enough for Donnie to get a lock. He fired two missiles. Now, F-35 pilot and YouTuber Hazard Lee wrote an excellent analysis of this incident for Sandbox News for us a little while back, and I'm going to quote Colonel Zelko directly from that piece. They were moving at three times the speed of sound, so there wasn't much time to react. I felt the first one go right over me, so close that it rocked the aircraft. Then I opened my eyes and turned my head, and there was the other missile. The impact was violent. I was at negative 7 Gs. My body was being pulled out of the seat upward toward the canopy. As I strained to reach the ejection handles, one thought crossed my mind. This is really, really, really bad. Now, Colonel Zelko was fortunately rescued later that same day, but I tell this story for two reasons. The first is to tell you that these low-frequency, early-warning, counter-stealth radar arrays have been around the whole time. They are the reason why Zoltan Donnie knew there was an F-117 approaching. But the second is that this story is often brought up when people are trying to discount stealth capabilities, or specifically American stealth platforms. The truth is, Zoltan Donnie deserves this win. He deserves tons of credit for having the wherewithal and the combat presence to make these hard decisions. But it's really important to understand that the reason these SA-3s were able to find the Nighthawk in the sky were that its bomb bay doors were open and its stealth profile was compromised, especially considering considering modern stealth fighters are designed to deploy their munitions in less than a second to prevent this from happening again. But more important than that was a failure that took place before the mission even started, at the mission planning stage, because this F-117 never should have been flying along the exact same flight path as repeated previous Nighthawk missions. Because we now understand that stealth fighters are plainly visible on many low-frequency radar arrays, you'll probably now appreciate why mission planning is absolutely essential for stealth fighter operations. Fighter pilots put a great deal of time and energy into mission planning so that they can press their advantages and leverage their opponent's weaknesses. And a big part of that is knowing the right route to take in and out of the fight. Believe it or not, things are actually a bit easier for stealth bomber pilots, despite stealth bombers being significantly bigger. Aircraft like the B-2 Spirit or the forthcoming B-21 Raider don't have things like vertical tails and other surfaces that they would need for aerobatic fighter performance, and as a result, they don't produce the same resonance to low-frequency radar arrays that can produce an easily detectable return. A B-2 Spirit could fly over your nation and you might never know it was there. But if an F-35 is in the neighborhood, you know it's there. 
But like Zoltan Dani in Yugoslavia in 1999, you've got your work cut out for you if you want to actually target it and shoot it down. But even if you're flying the F-22 Raptor, which is widely considered to be the stealthiest fighter ever to take to the sky, you still can't just fly into contested airspace without a plan. Stealth is a toolbox full of handy capabilities, but it's not a blanket solution for all the problems that combat may present. But I've got one more saved round before we call it a day, because most of the concept art that we've seen for the Air Force's forthcoming NGAD fighter or the Navy's FAXX fighter program all show a sort of variation on the delta wing design without vertical tail surfaces, and that may indicate that these aircraft will be very difficult to spot by even that early warning low frequency radar, and that would be a significant development. All of the world's stealth fighters, whether we're talking American, Russian, or Chinese, are detectable using these low-frequency early warning radar arrays. So if America's next generation of stealth fighters prove very difficult to detect by even these low-frequency radars, that would be a significant advantage and could result in America's stealth fighters actually being as sneaky as people think stealth fighters already are. And on that ends yet another edition of Air Power from Sandbox News. I'm Alex Hollings. Make sure you swing by sandboxnews.com today and every day for all the latest in news, entertainment, and motivation from all around the force. If you got anything out of today's video, make sure to click like and subscribe down below and leave me a comment so I know what I should cover next. And of course, don't forget to tap on that bell icon so you never miss a drop from Sandbox News.